Welcome in to the six man, Chris Draper and Brandon Burnett. Week one after Piedmont District Action, we are back. If you tuned in with us on Friday, we did the Bassett versus Christiansburg game. We didn't get to do the Magna Vista versus Dan River game. What a game that was from what we saw, what we read about probably in the Martinsville Bulletin or what we saw on Twitter via ABC 13 or via WDBJ7, WDBJ7, WSLS, or WFXR. But we keep up with our district as far as Martinsville, Tunstall, Bassett, Magna Vista, GW Danville, Patrick County, um, Halifax County. I think, did I say Tunstall just to make sure? Yeah, you said Tunstall. Okay, awesome. and Martinsville as well. But a couple of things on the schedule. So here we got coming up. We did the Bassett versus Christiansburg game, mm -hmm. and we'll start off talking about that game. It was a benefit game. They played it on a Thursday. We brought you Thursday night high school football. They played it on a Thursday because they couldn't play it on a Friday because technically it wasn't a real game. But both teams sure did play like it was a yeah, real game yeah, that game. Did. Cramps had a lot to do with it, a lot mm -hmm. to do with that game. The referees were in preseason shape. But Bassett did show a lot of potential. They did, they did. You know, they had a 31-15 lead in the third quarter. Yeah. But it was just it was amazing that game turned as quick as it did. One player really turned that game. I think one player really turned it. You talk about Dylan McKinney. You talk about a Piedmont District Player of the Year prospect, even an All-State prospect, just depending on what he can do for his team. And he's really going to have to lead these Bassett Bengals uh -huh. because – they're going to need his leadership. Definitely going they're going to need his legs. They're mm -hmm. going to need his arm. And he actually plays both sides of the ball. Yes, he does. He plays safety as well. And I think that's going to have a lot to do with Bassett. When you're talking about a team like Bassett, a lot of those players have to play on both sides of the ball for they them do. to be effective. Well, also, the, you know, the, they don't have the deepest roster. No, they don't. That's, yeah. and, that's, and that's a lot for it to do with the district. You see a lot of numbers dwindling, uh -huh. whether it's due to other sports or whether it's due to the kids just not coming out to want to play. But with the Bassett Bengals, it's like they have a very talented roster, they a do. very talented group of kids in Seven Ziegler and Dylan McKinney, especially Trey Wimbush. Boy, did he shine. He looked great. He looked amazing. He, and, and I'm telling you, when I say the kid probably has about four, 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 five speed, he probably has that. At least four, five At speed. least four. Four or five at yeah. the very least and probably four or four we're probably not giving him enough credit we need to see his 40 time but yeah. Trey Wimbush really showed out but Bassett just couldn't put two halves together yeah. as they were up 31 to 15 to end the half due to Dylan McKinney running two touch running two uh, two touchdowns and threw for one as well yeah had a 92 yard touchdown I actually went back and watched it that yeah. was incredible exactly that was incredible. It, it, it just like it, the if whole. It's not for Devin Clark. He doesn't get that touchdown with right. that block. So, but he huge runs a ninety-two yard scamper. Huge block. Huge block for Bassett. Yeah. But they just couldn't put it together. I mean, he cramps up in the second half. At the beginning of the second half, goes out of the game. They bring that in Kevon as well the as their game. backup quarterback. They bring him uh -huh. in. Can't really. They fumble a couple of snaps. They lose the ball down towards the ten. Ends up going on, and, and the momentum picks up for Christiansburg and Charles. Wahisi, Wahisi, he and was Alec amazing. Henderson take over the game for Christiansburg, and they just absolutely do damage to the Bengals. I think the Bengals ran out of gas. It was an extremely long game, three hours to be exact. Longest non-overtime high school football game I've ever seen. Yeah, it's, I mean, it was a, it yeah. was a. I don't really like the officiating because a lot of calls were overturned in that game. And they yeah, didn't they really know the what flag to call. Three times. Exactly. But the kids, you know, Bassett really gave that game away. They gassed out. They're going to have to improve their linebacking core. The outside linebackers and the inside linebackers, that linebacking core and that line will have to improve on both sides of the ball for them moving forward as they will host Blacksburg in our first official game yeah. of the year this season. We'll have it on Friday. Brandon will not be with us. That's the only game of the season. He won't be with us. Yes. Hopefully we'll have somebody filling in for the color commentary don't know just yet but that will pretty much be a big game for Bassett as Bassett lost to Blacksburg last year 44 to 6 so they'll look to avenge that loss against yeah, Blacksburg, well, Blacksburg do they have tough. a better team yes they have a great wide receiving core in Coco Lobo mm -hmm. in Devin Clark and Trey Wimbush in we didn't Justin really see. Taylor. We, we didn't, didn't see yeah. too much of Justin. We didn't see much of Coco Lobo. We didn't see. Well, yeah. they ran him in motion yeah. a lot of times uh -huh. with the sweep, a jet sweep. Uh -huh. They did as much as they could with him, but really, it was just all Dylan McKinney and Trey Wimbush yep. for the most part. So that's the spearheaded attack that Bassett will hope to lead against Blacksburg, which we will have as our BTW game of the week. Magna Vista is on a bye week. So we'll get straight into the Warriors, man. Because I know that's what everybody's <laughs> yeah. looking forward to. The Warriors are they in trouble? 
Well, I'm going to tell you, I, I heard from several people who were at this game. Yes. Dan River is really good. Yes. I've heard Dan River is probably going to challenge Appomattox for the 2A state title I've this heard year. this as well. And I believe that was a tough game from them to start the season out with, Magna Vista. Yeah. With having losing so many players like So McGuire many seniors. And Harrison and Red and, yeah. and all these players that they lost – Going on the road, and you know they were leading this game fourteen to seven in the third quarter, and it—I don't know what happened. It got ugly. Yeah, 30, I don't know if the teams. Really, yeah. I don't know if they ran out of gas. I don't know if the mental fortitude, the mental toughness, wasn't there for this team like we're accustomed to seeing. However, I talked to a couple of coaches as well. Um, I talked to a couple of my sources. Just, and that's my Stephen A. Cliff right there. I talked to a couple of my sources. I mean, listen, Dan Rivers kids, this is the thing I like for everybody to realize about Magna Vista. Yes, they lost to a 2A opponent, and I hope the VHSL is watching this. I hope a couple of people at WDBJ7, WSLS, WFXR, a lot of these you know, media outlets for football across the state of Virginia are watching about Magna Vista. Dan River is not a normal 2A team. No, they're not. They will challenge Appomattox for the state championship this year. Yes. They reloaded this year, if you ask the coach down there and if you ask any of the coaches on Magna Vista's team. It's not an excuse for Magna Vista as they had a 14-7 lead going into the third and they gave up 22-7 in the rest of the game. That was amazing. And that's something we haven't seen out of Magna Vista too much in the last two to three years. No. But you do have a new team with Magna Vista. They are not making any excuses, but I'd like to say Coach Varel is probably happy that they get a bye week this week. So they can focus on them but Magna Vista opening up their schedule if you want me to take a look at that if they open up their schedule I mean listen they're started off playing Dan River which is a potential 2A state championship opponent mm -hmm. kids are basically the same size as Magna Vista's kids right across the board they're just very to be big. honest and they could probably challenge any team in 3A as well as Magna Vista as you've seen them beat the defending state champs as well as possibly going up to 4A and doing very well as they'll probably play GW this year I think Who? on the schedule will Dan River play GW they play them in a benefit game they will not play them in regular okay season. so it won't play in the regular season but if you go you know if you've seen that game I guarantee they get, it will be challenged and they gave GW a pretty good challenge in that game. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. But look at Magna Vista's schedule. I'm not making any excuses for the Warriors whatsoever. They won't want me making any excuses for them. Austin Perkins, Chris Scales, even though Jason Scales has been out with injury and did not play in the Dan River game, that's key there yeah, as well, that is key. did not play in the Dan River game, possibly the leader of that team, and especially the front seven of Magna Vista. Absolutely. They start off with not only Dan River, which is a potential 2A state champ, they start off with Jefferson Forrest, who is a potential 4A state champ that they will be going up against. They caught the win last week as well, did they not? I think it they was. They did. A, they had a little troubling time against William Fleming, but they caught the win. But they will play Jefferson Forrest, who got knocked out last year by Salem in about the state semifinals, if not the state quarterfinals, if I presume. So that's another team that they will play against. That's magnificent schedule. Also, they will face another big juggernaut, a juggernaut opponent, opponent, 4A team that can compete for a state championship and possibly has one of of the best running backs oh, in yeah. the state of Virginia. His name is Larry Basham. We got accustomed to seeing him last year. He ran all over Magna Vista. And what I'm saying is this. Look at the opponents. The first three games for Magna Vista are juggernaut matches. So Magna Vista could potentially start off 0-3 <laughs> go about six and four through their whole schedule, still make the playoffs, and still possibly get back to the state semifinals in 3-8, given that they get everything together. They still have that potential. So let's not look at, hey, Hoop Magnavis is going down. Let's look at the overall schedule and see who they're playing first before we make any judgments. Yeah, their first three games, you know, there are two of them are on the road. Exactly. They play at William Byrd. They played William Byrd at home last year. We were at that game, 41-40. to 40. That it was, was a big a, game, man. That was an incredible ball. That was just coming off that Jefferson Forest And it loss. came down to Jason Scales and Larry Basham. Yeah. It came down to Jason Scales making a play against Larry Basham when they went for two last year, uh -huh. and that's how they won the game. Yep. But we saw the potential that William Byrd had, and we've seen it so far, and it's scary. Do you remember how they won the game? Do you, do you remember how, how, how did they win the game, Brandon? Uh, Trevion Red scored from 67 yep. yards out, mm -hmm. and they retook the lead, and they were able to hold on to it. And mm -hmm. they that was a very, very exciting game. And I think this was going to be too. Exactly, but that's a different man of this team. That's mm -hmm. a lot of senior leadership, yeah. and I'm not saying there's a lot of senior leadership on this team, but those kids were mentally tough. They had already won a state championship. They were coming off a loss to Jefferson Forest. They wanted to redeem themselves. Mm -hmm. They reached down deep and got the win. 
And that's what I'd like to see out of this Magna Vista team coming up. It's the mental toughness. It's the not making mistakes and breaking down in certain situations. Because even though that team Magna Vista last year made certain mistakes on the special team side of things, mm -hmm. which they made mistakes against Dan River as well, um, this team was able to dig down deep, reach down, take a punch, and fight back like Rocky. <laughs> yep. So, and that's what Magna Vista was. I, I and, like and, that analogy. And from, and from those hard three games that they saw, uh-huh. They didn't see any other hard games after the schedule. They flew no. through everybody except GW. And if you look at the GW game, they won that last year, in all honesty. It yep. was horrible officiating. I'm willing to say that on it, on camera, on air. They did not whatever. play their they, best. They did not play their best. But Sean McGuire throws throw four interceptions. Hayden's wide open probably on the 10. But, you know, Jock has a great game. The front seven has a great game, only allows one score. Yep. In all honesty, you know, they lost that. I mean, they just gave that game away, to be honest, against mm -hmm. GW. This, this year might be a totally different scenario as GW won their first game against Athens. They start off 1-0, so the PD looks a little different at the top of the standings than what everybody's accustomed yeah. to seeing because, yeah. you know, Magna Vista took the loss. So we're going to take a quick commercial break because we're spouting off about that. But um, when we come back. Did Martinsville just break a losing streak in Franklin County as well? Stay tuned for more of the six men. Hospital of Martinsville in Henry County, we understand the power of home. Knowing that Memorial Hospital brings the latest technology and the best medical professionals together for you, our families, friends, and neighbors, right here in Martinsville, is sometimes the best medicine. When you need cardiac care, time is critical. Our expert cardiologists are just moments away, meaning better outcomes for you and your heart. The best in care, the closeness of family and friends, that's the power of home. Have you ever been so busy that you neglected your car? Stop by one of our two locations for a free 21-point inspection. We offer full-service oil changes, tire rotations, radiator flushes, and complete engine diagnostics. And don't forget, at Quick Lube, we offer a loyalty rewards program for every six full-service oil changes free. Quick Lube serving you with two locations, Ridgeway and Martinsville, or visit us online at quicklubeva.com. Sign up for Pharmacy Text Alerts today. It's a simple, easy way to refill your prescription. Simply go online and register at www.refillrx.com or download the app to your smartphone. Getting your prescriptions just got easier at Family Pharmacy in Stanley Town, serving our community since 1996. Loan specialist. Usually that's someone who fights for your signature then sells your loan to Never Neverland, never to speak with you again. At Martinsville First Savings Bank, we don't sell our loans, and we're locally owned and operated, so all decisions are made at 25 West Church Street in Uptown Martinsville. We've been serving the South Side since 1924. Proof that serving you Thank remains you. our focus. For more information, call 276-638-8771 or visit martinsvillefirst.com. FDIC insured, equal housing lender. We're back with the six man, Chris Draper and Brandon Burnett. And did Mar and did the Martinsville Bulldogs break an opening day losing streak? Yes, they did. They won opening game 28 to 21. The Bulldogs are 1 and 0. A little different look for the Piedmont district than what people are accustomed to. I'll run off the standings, then we'll talk about the Bulldogs. So GW Danville starts off 1 and 0. That's no surprise. They they crushed Athens. Yeah. Then you have Halifax starting off 1 and 0, beating Patrick County 42 to 12 in that game as well. Then you have Martinsville starting off 1 and 0, beating Moorhead 28 to 21. And Franklin County finishes out 1 and 0 with a 36-34 win over Liberty. Mm -hmm. Now, losers in these standings go. Tunstall, Magna Vista, 
Patrick County, and Bassett has yet to play a game as the first week was their bye week. Now, with the Martinsville Bulldogs, we've always said that they've had very good skill players. Mm -hmm. We've always said that they have Zant they have you have Xanthus Harrison, you lost Cameron Bradley, you lost Ty Ty Carter, you lost Jay Dandridge. Yes. But you still have Aaron Aaron Martin, who got hurt in the first half of that game, really didn't see much of the second half, but still not too big of an injury from what I'm hearing. They still were able to win. Still were able to win. And you have Dasine Harrison as well. And we saw a little bit of him last year as he was a freshman, sophomore coming up this year, but Orion Martin has raved about this guy and is saying he is a he if he keeps his head on straight, stays out of trouble, stays working. He picked him up every day during the summer. I was reading Harrison Hamlet's piece in the Martinsville Bulletin. Shout out to Harrison Hamlet, giving him a little credit for the piece <laughs> he wrote, as well as he covers a lot of these games and Kara Cooper, too, for the Martinsville Bulletin. But, you know, you're reading about that. You're seeing Dacine Harrison. He put in the work. He favors Le'Veon Bell. And we want to see this kid as we really won't have a Martinsville game until about the midway of the season. But we have to keep up with this is what we do. So you're mm -hmm. seeing Xanthus Harrison. He took over a quarterback. He's never played quarterback, but he did a fairly good job. Mm -hmm. They credited Martinsville's front seven for doing a very good job against Moorhead to keep the win. As the skill players, we've seen Martinsville be able to score on a lot of teams. They probably could have at least had a winning season last year. A lot of close games for Martinsville if we check the schedule last year. I mean, listen, McMichael, who they'll play next week. They lost 36 to 43. Floyd County, they beat 30, 34 to 19. Then you play Dan River, and they actually beat Dan River 25 to 21 last year. So you play Magna Vista, you lose 6 to 47. You play Halifax, which could have went either way 21 to 14. You play GW Danville, which we all knew was a loss, but you play Tunstall and you lose 16 to 14. Lose on you a walk-off field You goal. see a lot of these close games. You show that you can shut out a team in Bassett, oh, who yeah. was a very good scoring team last year. Uh, you know, they couldn't play any defense. Then you shut out Patrick County two games straight. You go to the playoffs and you lose to Buckingham County 7-47. to So I'm saying is this, a couple of those close games against McMichael last year, against Halifax County, and against Tunstall, that's three losses to three wins that you probably could have had as you went four and seven last year, yeah. and you could have went seven and four. We were at that McMichael game last year, and yeah. Martinsville looked like they had that game in the yes, bag. Yes, they did. And, and that, that they just couldn't hold on. It was 43-36, right? So what I'm saying, I know O'Ron Martin is happy with this bunch, and I hope that they make less mistakes than they've made last year, as that's a lot about high school football right there. It's making less mistakes than the other team. Yep. Because most of these teams can score on each other, except for a Magna Vista and a GW Danville, <coughs> for the most part, where defenses are just spring-loaded across the board. Yes, they are. Even though Magna Vista's secondary, we're going to see about that this year. Yes. That's going to be a problem. But I think Martinsville can come out with a winning record this year as we check out their schedule, and they play McMichael. Close game last year. They might be able to get the win this year. They host that game this year, so they should be able to get the win. Then you have Floyd County. They'll probably get that win. Dan River, if they are able to compete and beat Dan River this year. That would be amazing. Is that not amazing? Is that That's, that's, that's basically saying Martinsville is basically a 2A state contender now. Yeah, I mean, you know, that Dan River, they, they played Dan River at Dan River this year. Exactly. Right? And yeah. No, no, no. They played Dan River actually yeah, at Dan River. That's what you're saying, yeah. at Dan River. Uh -huh. And then the next game, which is Friday, September the 23rd, they host Magna Vista. Tell me, if they don't beat, if they beat Dan River, do they not feel like they can go in and beat Magna Vista depending on what Magna Vista has done coming up and Magna Vista could possibly be about 0 and 3, about 1-4 and 4 at this point? Really, I'm going to be honest with you, I really think – Magna Vista, or Magna Vista could be primed to be. I, I would still be considered that an upset if Martinsville was. That's still be, an upset, yeah, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, that's an upset because it's been a. But it's a different Magna Vista team. It not, is a different Magna Vista team. But I'm saying team. if if Martinsville would have garnered these wins against McMichael, Floyd County, stayed very close with Dan River and actually put up a front against them, if not stay close, if not win, they beat them last year, so they got confidence against yes, them. Yes, yes, they do. You know, even though Dan River has reloaded, I'm just saying. You know, think about the proportions of that game, how epic that game is in the district anyway. Yeah. Just think, if you have Martinsville basically going into that game and they're undefeated at this time, then you have Magna Vista going into that game and they're not undefeated at this time. They're basically, let's say, all right, so a, a loss to Dan River, maybe a loss to Jefferson Forest at a wave, William Bird, a loss there. They're 0-3 at this point. Uh, but I think they're going to win one of those two games. You think they'll win one of those two games? Now, listen, Jefferson Forrest has lost a lot as well, but they have to travel to William Byrd. Yeah, see, I think that one's going to be tougher. I think yeah. that's going to be a tough Home games are game. always so much easier for them. But Magna Vista has shown the ability to win on the road. But I'm just saying, 
it, that sets up a game of epic proportions mm -hmm. because yeah. Magna Vista can't afford to lose but so much given the point system that it has at this time. I mean, you know, we could be saying if Magna Vista starts off this way, you know, win out the rest of their games, lose to GW or what have you, we could see Magna Vista possibly get one of the lowest rankings or one of their lowest seeds in the 3A yeah. tourney, in the 3A matchups, and then you're going against Phoebus third yeah. round, second You know, you're yeah. going against a team yeah. like that, and you don't That's really what, want, a tough you don't want that starting yeah. off. You still want good position in the, in the state tournament. Well, the thing is, you know, with Magna Vista, yeah. they have really l very little room for and, error. And maybe we're over-exaggerating about Martinsville here. That's true. You know, so and, and that's and that's our job, but we're going to have to see a little bit more. We'll see what they do Martin, against McMichael. Said, we'll see what they do against McMichael as they lost that game 36-43. to 43. We'll see what they do. If this is a different Martinsville team, we could see better matchups in the Piedmont district, as I was talking to a couple of my sources as well. My co some, some people of mine around the district that give me a lot of information, man, I appreciate it. Um, you know, we could see a lot more parity in the district this year. Be nice, because uh, last year that was one thing I did I didn't really see. Yeah, uh, we went to a lot of games yeah. and a lot. Of, it was a lot of blowouts last year. So that's something we could see a lot this year. And I mean, I, I even think Patrick County can possibly get more wins this year on their schedule. They won two they games last, for the past yeah. two years. Yeah, I think they can. Well, win that's four. improvement. That's improvement over what they did the previous. You know, uh, and, years. and that's improvement for yeah. them. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. And Tunstall, they they came out. And, and basically, they lost 49-14 to 14 to Rustburg, so you're seeing rebuilding stages in Tunstall, too. We're not seeing the Tunstall we saw two years ago mm -hmm. when they well, were a, a really good now. Tunstall team, yeah. and they competed in the 3A you know, tournament with Magna Vista. Yep. Remember and that? They, they, they were actually a pretty good team, so we're not seeing that anymore. Well, well just a couple. They lost a lot. Yeah, just a couple seasons ago, they were actually in the state semifinals. Yeah. So, and that was, I think, the furthest run they've ever made in the state, it's a state tournament. So, I mean, we're just seeing, I and mean, we're hoping that it's a lot more parity in the district. We love to see really good games, and we oh, love yeah. to host those. I mean, you know, Bassett kicked us off with Bassett versus Christiansburg, and it was a really good game to start off, but Bassett just gassed out, cramping all over the board for both teams. And, you know, it was basically who could withstand the, the heat and who could withstand well, well, it was the a war of the, attrition. You know, the it was a so war of attrition, pretty much the whole the whole time. And that's what happened with them. But you know, key games upcoming this week for Friday's matchups. Before we leave you guys, so we have we're gonna do the Bassett versus Blacksburg game. We'll have that game on BTW Twenty One on Facebook as well. Um, so we'll have that game. So tune into that one and show up at Bassett as well. We might even have a pregame show for that brought to you by Autos by Nelson just to let you guys know. So we'll have, you know, that game. And then Martinsville plays McMichael. They'll travel to McMichael. Then you have Franklin County versus William, Flem William Fleming trying to avenge a loss as well as they lost to William Fleming 45-7. to You have Halifax versus EC Glass. They lost 14-20. to Tunstall will host Gretna. They lost last year 13-37. to the Warriors will have a bye week, much needed, uh, according to Coach Vivero, so they can focus on themselves. Um, then Patrick County will play Floyd. They lost to Floyd last year, 18-28. to I expect Patrick County to possibly get a win in that game, depending on they have a couple injuries on their roster. And then we have GW trying to avenge a loss to Vance that they suffered last year, 28-7. to Their only regular season loss. Their only regular season loss as it put them in an eighth seed last mm, year. That's amazing. You know, and that shows you how good that's how good 4A, 4A is, yeah. you know. So Bassett, if they're gonna look to make the playoffs this year, they're gonna have to do a lot in 4A. And they're gonna have to win out. They have a very tough schedule to start with Blacksburg and Pulaski and teams like that just to start oh, off yeah. the entire season. You know, so we look forward to a lot in the Piedmont district. If you have any information you would like to send us, if you have anything we you'd like us more to do on the show, we focus on football here, especially during the Piedmont district time because that's really what the people want to see. We'll focus a lot more on a lot of the sports like volleyball too. We'll give you those scores too. But right now, this was all about the Piedmont district. This was all about Magna Vista, Bassett, and about Martinsville. As Franklin County also snapped a 17-game skid. That's amazing. Wow. They snapped a 17-game skid. They haven't skid, lost 36, yeah. 30, uh, excuse yeah. me, 18-game losing streak, 36-34 over Liberty. So that might bode well for Franklin County. It's been almost two years. Forward, it's been know? almost two years since they won a regular season game. They're a 6-18, man. They have to basically win their entire schedule to make the playoffs. That is a brutal schedule they have, too. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, just going along with that. But, listen, we thank you for tuning in. We have the game Bassett versus Blacksburg this Friday 
as well. Coach Gilbert and company against Blacksburg, um, trying to avenge a loss, 44-6. And then we want to thank the people for tuning in on Facebook Live. Thank you for our viewership. We continuously appreciate it. And like I said on Facebook, man, I'm going to continue to preach. You know, a lot of separatist things are going on, and we do. And, and I stick with sports, to be honest with you. A lot of separatist things are going on, especially in the media. But we have to preach love for one another, man. That is the golden rule. That is what we should be focusing on as people, preaching love for one another. Love thy neighbor as you would love yourself, man. So I agree. That's, that's something that is not getting talked about a lot is loving thy neighbor as thyself. That is the one thing we should focus on in these times of turmoil. So I'm Chris Draper. He's Brandon Burnett. Follow us on Twitter on BTW21. We'll be bringing you more football this season. Watch College Football Saturday. Oh, and College Football Saturday is <laughs> definitely coming up. We're ready for that, man. So yes. we want to we thank everybody. We want to thank Rodney Billings. We want to thank Chad Hall. We want to thank Douglas Hubbard. We want to thank everybody. Linda as well. We want to thank everybody at BTW21 for helping us continue to keep going strong. And I'm, like I said, love thy neighbor as thyself, man. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Thank you. Good day. God bless. Hope you have a great rest of your day. It's been the sixth man. Autos by Nelson. I am Autos by Nelson. I am Autos by Nelson. I'm Autos by Nelson. I am 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 Autos by Nelson. Over 400 employees serving Marshall Henry County over 40 years. We, we are Autos, Autos by Nelson. Nelson. Martinsville Family Dentistry. We're not your typical dentist office. With over 100 combined years of experience and three dentists to choose from at our facility, we can make most appointments same day. No more waiting lists. No more inconvenient appointment times. Our friendly and knowledgeable staff would love to meet you. So what are you waiting for? New patients are welcome. So call Martinsville Family Dentistry at 632-6219. Hey everyone and welcome to Everything Outdoors, your one-stop shop for all of your yard, garden, and landscape needs. Certified Class A contractors and a family-owned and operated nursery, you can feel confident in knowing that you are working with the best. Here at the nursery, we offer everything from vegetables, flowers, trees, shrubs, and pottery to help you create your perfect outdoor space. Project too big to do yourself? Let us help you out with a free estimate. Whether your yard needs just a little pick-me-up or a complete overhaul, give us a call or stop by and see us at Everything Outdoors, 6211 Virginia Avenue in Bassett. The Smith River Sports Complex has the entire sports community talking. Facilities are fantastic. I mean, no, no, matter, uh, no matter where you go in the country, you won't find as good of uh, facilities as we got here in Martinsville. Everyone is just so friendly and wants, wants us to have a good time here. I've never been on the field this this great. We run the Cardinal Cup lacrosse tournament here and we absolutely love the venue. The fields are great, the amenities are great, the concessions. Your local news is brought to you in part by Radial. For more career opportunities in Martinsville, visit radial.com. At Memorial Hospital of Martinsville in Henry County, we understand the power of home. Knowing that Memorial Hospital brings the latest technology and the best medical professionals together for you, our families, friends, and neighbors, right here in Martinsville, is sometimes the best medicine. When you need cardiac care, time is critical. Our expert cardiologists are just moments away, meaning better outcomes for you and your heart. The best in care, the closeness of family and friends, that's the power of home.